Hello. Welcome, everyone. Mike just threatened to leave since it's 5 o'clock on a Friday and I'm doing a live, so he, he may go take a nap. Maybe open a beer, I don't know. But welcome, everyone. I'm hoping you can hear me okay. I thank you for joining me this Friday. I don't know why I chose Friday at 5. I was out of town earlier this week, and I was going to do a little earlier, and I thought I'd do something a little bit later in case it was helpful for different time zones. So welcome, welcome. Um, yay, I'm so glad you're here. Yes, welcome, man. Oh, somebody's in the hospital. Oh, sending you big prayers. Uh, welcome. So today I am just playing with some older products. I am using um, Pink Fresh Studios today. Pink Fresh has been a longtime favorite of mine. I have used their products for many years in many, many videos. And actually, I think everything I'm using today I've used in videos in the past. And if you don't know, you can go to my website. Let me look at it on the screen here so I can tell you exactly where to go. If you go to my website, at the top you'll see uh, galleries. Right along the top there's a button that says galleries. And under that you can look, uh, you can search in all the cards I've ever done in the card gallery, or you can search in all the videos I've done in the video gallery. And you can search by techniques, themes, or by companies. So you could go in there and you know pick either the card gallery or the video, video gallery, pink, pick, pink Fresh Studios, and lots of those projects will come up, including many projects that um, use the products that I'm using today. So I just thought I'd reach back and grab some older stuff. Welcome everyone. Yes, I'm spring. I'm, I'm cheering spring on. It's a little it's getting better. It was a little gloomier there, but the sun's out now. Welcome. Ooh, 92. Ooh, yikes. Um, Brianne, Brianne, thank you. Brianne's in the comments and she just put a link to the gallery. So thank you very much for that. Okay, so today what, what we're going to do is I've got a lot. You know me. I plan too much. So I'm going to try to do as much as I can today. If I can't get it all done, I may go live again like on Sunday and just share some other ideas and just play, just have some fun. Um, I think I have three cards planned, three and a half cards planned. So if I don't get one of them, I will share that on Sunday along with something else. So um, yes, Betty, I, I you didn't get a text because for the second time now, the texting service that we use gives an error when you go to the website, which is really weird. Um, so I apologize that we weren't able to send one out. Unfortunately, a lot of people rely on those texts, and I wish it was working. Yeah, Mike's a little frustrated by it. So again, I'm using Pink Fresh Studios, and I told uh, the sweet folks at Pink Fresh Studio that I would be doing this live, and they offered a 15% off site-wide discount code. So everything I'm using today is included in that 15% off. They also have free shipping, a US shipping on orders of like 100 or whatever, but it's all in the description below. So if you use the code, what's the code, Mike? J M I N K? Um, let me, or maybe I it's not. Claudio's back, so I'm Hold on. Let me, I'm going to look because I think I just told you wrong. No, it's J M 15. If you use the code J M 15, you'll get 15% off all products except for their newest release and their events. Everything I'm using today is included in that 15% off. Um, so it's just a little perk. I appreciate when companies do this, but keep in mind the techniques that I'm doing today are not reliant on the specific products that I'm using today. So you can use them with other products too. But I thought it was fun to offer more ideas for these supplies and that they offered that nice code. Uh, so it's JM15 at Pink Fresh Studios. All that information is in the description below. Um, also, yes, Pink Fresh is awesome. They're wonderful. They, this is like a moving sale for them. They just moved um, uh, their offices, and so um, this is this is a good time for them. Um, okay, so I just wanted to mention at the top of my description, you'll see a link. It's like um, JM Inc. slash live or something. It's right at the top of the description. If you click that, and open it in another window, you can see thumbnails of all the products I'm talking about and that description. So that might be helpful to refer back to. Um, so it's just something that a lot of people like that visual, so I thought I would offer that too. So that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna do 
um, kind of a spin on some of the really fun pop-up window cards that I've done in some videos in the past. I used it, I did this in a live once, but kind of in a basic way. So I thought I would kind of step it up and show more ways of doing this because it's something you can do with a lot of products. Oh, Kelly, thank you. Thank you. Uh, she gave a super chat to say that she needed a crafty escape today. Here's the thing. I feel ya. I feel ya. I just had a Disney escape, but it's hard to come back to the real world. So crafty escape is a good, good follow-up. So I'm glad that you're here. Okay. So I'm going to get started with my first card. I'm going to show it to you first, just so you could know where we're headed with the technique. So I'm going to switch over to the overhead. So this is the card we're going to do. And surprisingly, it's not super complicated, believe it or not. So when it's closed, you can see you have lots of gold shine. You can see the foil on there, which we don't even need a foil machine for. And then the gold frame. And when you open it up, that element pops up and there's plenty of room to write a personal message. So it, you can see that sentiment when the card is open or closed. And it stands nicely on display. Now I've done a variation of this particular kind of pop-up in a previous live. So I'm gonna start with this one, but then I'm gonna to switch to like a side pop-up. A pop-up. So when you open to the side, it pops up and I'll also do a five by seven card. And then I also have like an offset pop up. So this is the basic one that I thought I would start with too. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is create all of these elements here. And I thought I would use product. I don't even think I've used these in a video, but I use them a lot off screen because they're super fast to use. So this is the pink fresh. How do you tubers? Is that how you say that? I, I don't know. I need, I need JC here with this, um, expert, um, flower knowledge, but this set, oops, this should be down here. This set is a long stamp set. So this is like almost 12 by four stamp set. And you see all of the images here, all of those are connected. That way you stamp them all at once and then you can die cut them all at once. See how it lines up? Oh, thank you. Oh, Mike, Mike gave me a super chat. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate the encouragement. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, Kathy. <laughs> and then I sent $2, which is the lowest amount. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy, for the, the fruit salad. You guys are all too much. Man, Friday night, we got to have some fun, right? So um, is it two bros? Did somebody say tuber rose? I don't know. We'll have to Google that a little bit later. So there is this one die that cuts out all of those. So you can stamp them all at once, color them however you want, and then cut them all out at once. There's also a, um, a die for the two sentiments down here. Feel better soon. I feel like that's one, unfortunately, we need too much. And think of this as a card. What a great sentiment. So I've been wanting to use this. As be, this has been in my two use uh, basket over there. So I'm glad to use it. Now, if you want, um, Pinkfresh has lots of different options of how to use their collections. So you can um, either you know stamp in color, you could stamp in die cut, you could stamp in watercolor. What they have also now, or also with this, is the layering stencils that color in this image. So you can stamp with this, and then you can line up each of the stencils and color them. So it allows you to color all those very quickly. Now these are all sold separately so you can pick and choose like what appeals to you. So there's the stamps, the stencils, and then there's dies. But what's even better and something that's really unique that Pink Fresh does is they have this washi tape that coordinates with these products. So if you don't want to stamp and stencil, you can use this, look at this. It's a big roll of washi tape. And what I do is I just put it down onto white cardstock and take this little, I had this little ending piece on here so that I wouldn't um, have problems with uh, catching the end again. So you just spread it out onto white cardstock and then I'm going to cut off here at the top. Now this I leave right here. I leave this piece of cardstock here because it's kind of, it's something that I can grab onto next time I go to use this. So I don't have to fish for the end. So basically this is giant washi tape that you can stick down on the cardstock. I think it's a little bit stickier than regular washi, but another thing you can do 
and I probably won't take the time to do this in uh, the video, is you can put this along the back of your card or a back of your envelope. So say you make an, a card, you put the card in there, mail, uh, put the address in the front, you can put this along the back or you can put it like along the flap of the envelope and trim off the excess. So a lot of you can do with it. And the nice thing is I don't know how many, like how many times you can use it, but you can, you can see there's a lot on that roll. I'm wondering if one of the Pink Fresh Studio people is here that could tell me that. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, so now you could have stamped or and used the stencils or colored, or you could do this. And the neat thing is, um, let's see if you can see it. Do you see that it's foil outline? So there's shine to it, beautiful, beautiful shine. And it looks like it's watercolor, and as all you know, watercolor is something that I'm still working on. So I think it's fun that it gives me that look very easily. So now I'm gonna take some tape here and tape it in place. It looks like my text just went out, Mike got it working. Sorry, that was a problem. I'm gonna tape this in place. Now the reason I'm taping this and not just relying on the magnetic mat on my um, die cut machine is because I'm gonna have to run it through in two. Now if you use like a Spellbinders Platinum, you could definitely um, use the, I'll show you, let me show you. Like their cutting plates are long enough. No, that's the wrong one. Oh, the cutting plates are long enough so you could run it through in one pass. But if you have like the Gina K Intracut or like uh, the Empress, which is what I'm using here, you can see the this die is too big for it. So what I do is I put it down with part of it hanging off the bottom and I'll run that through. Sorry for the noise here. Um, so yeah, these this washi tape, they have several collections. In fact, in the description, I have a link to all of their washi tape collection. Um, but they've got a bunch of other ones. And I'll, I'll show you a few that I went ahead and cut just to show examples. Now, So I've cut most of it, but I need to go cut this bottom part here. So now I'll put that through like that. So if your die is too big, don't worry one bit. Somebody said 42, make 42, is that right? Oh yes, Alicia, you're right. There are longer plates available for this machine. You're totally right, you could use those. Um, but I'm being lazy, what can I say? I don't know my longer plates. Actually, my longer plates are right there underneath the machine. But So now look at this. All of these are cut out. And one of the things I like about Pink Fresh and what they do is with their dyes, they even cut out like that. So there's not a lot of white space in there. You can see it cuts it out so detailed. And look how beautiful that is. Beautiful. Um, how many inches is the repeat on the washi tape? Oh, it's about, looks like it's about nine, 10, nine or 10, long enough for that. So now right away I can go and this is gonna line up with the next row. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna use these today. This is the tube, what is it Mike? Tube rows. Tube rows. This is the tube rows. But let me just, before I move on, I just wanna show you some of the other options. Hang on, I'm coming back. There are tons, like I said, they have a ton. Um, so this is the Rainbow Daisies. They have the stamp set with the sentiments. They have the die that cuts it out and the dies that cut out the sentiments. And you can see this does like these Rainbow Daisy. And again, it, all of these have that foil to it. I don't know if you can see that foil. I wish you could see it because it's really fine detail foil. Super easy and you can see the beautiful color. So this one's Rainbow Daisies. They have butterflies, they have holiday versions. I'm just showing you the ones that I grabbed that I was considering using for this card. This is the Artistic Dahlia. I mean, look at even this tiny little one, so cute. You can see those. But look at this, this looks like, I mean, goodness. I wish I could color like that. Such a great way to get a beautiful result very quickly. So this is the Artistic Dahlia. Again, this one comes with, um, you, you could get the stamps and stencils, um, the dies, or the washi, and you can see the washi is just beautiful. So anyways, I thought I'd show this because it really makes for a much faster, much faster card. Okay, so I have all of these pieces ready, and we want to do a fun pop-up card with it. So let's see. Uh, the glass mat that I have, it's in the description below. It's the studio, uh, the Glassboard Studio, it's magnetic, so I've got these magnets that will allow me to, you know, hold a stencil in place or maybe hold a card 
in place until I glue it down. It's really handy and I, I really like it. But I have it linked below and there's a discount code for that down there too. Okay, so first up, let's do, oop, hang on. I'm throwing things around. Let us do the card itself. So I have it, two things here. I have a note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. You can use whatever size you want for this. This first card example, I'm doing um, just basic four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And if you're curious about cutting different card sizes and stretching your supplies to use on different card sizes, check out my last video. My last pre recorded video it might be helpful to you. I also have a, um, this is a dotted scallops from Pink Fresh. This is one of those background dies that does a piercing pattern, but it doesn't cut the outside edge, which I think is really handy because that way you could do it directly on the front of a note card. So for this example, you can see I did the piercing in the background directly on the front of the note card, but for this one, I'm gonna double up the front. All right. So here we have that fun bit of, is that showing up? I think you can kind of see it. There we go. So it's a fun little pure pattern. All right. So now that's the dotted scallops. Now, as far as what kind of frame you make on the front, you could do a rectangle frame, a circle, a heart. Uh, I do think generally this card is easiest with a simple frame shape. However, I'm going to show you one that's kind of stepped up a little bit later, but here I thought I would use, um, is this, these are the hexagons. So I have two of the hexagon dies. These are from Pink Fresh also. They sell the stacking hexagon dies. They also sell foil, um, foil plates that you can use with them. So let me see here, get this off my magnet. So what you can do is like cut a hexagon and do a foil, like a foil line right on the inside. Or you can cut the hexagon, do a foil line, and then use the next hexagon inside of that and you have a foiled frame. So there's many things that you can do um, using these. I have used these before in a video several times and I just think they're fantastic. So I'm using just two of the hexagon frames or dies and I'm using two that are close in size so that we can create a frame on the front of our card. Make sure I got the right size. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the smaller of the two. I'm gonna tape that as close to the center of my card as possible. You could go a little higher, you could go a little lower, whatever you want, but I'm going for kind of middle of that card panel. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's about 40, you get about 40 um, cuts from that washi, and it's a lot of pieces. I mean, you get a lot of pieces from one. So you could, you know, if you think you're gonna make more than 40, God bless you. And you can always just, um, you know, get a couple rolls in the dies and, you know, we'll always work with it. All right, so I have that um, frame, the smaller of the two hexagon frames, just taped to the center of that scallop panel. I also have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. I'm gonna hold this on the front of it like this. So I'm gonna hold it on the front. See how I'm just holding it there? I'm gonna lay it into my die cut machine, okay? Now I'll run this through, and this will cut through the panel where we did the scallop dotting, and it'll cut through the front of our note card. What's the size of the largest hexagon? I will look. Largest, largest hexagon is a little bit smaller. It looks like it's about five and a quarter by four. So this is an A2 card panel. So you can see it's a little bit smaller than that. So this is four inches wide by five and a quarter. So it's great for making a shaped card or really covering the front of the card. Okay, so I ran this through. Now this may not have cut completely because remember I had them stacked together. So what I'll do is I'll take the front off. All right, and then I'm gonna take this and pop it right in there so I can finish it from cutting. Because I'm cutting through two heavyweight pieces, sometimes you have to go through, um, run it through again, but it doesn't take long. All right. Um, I do recommend when making cards like this because we're cutting out so much in the center, you want to use a heavyweight cardstock for this. I'm using Nina Classic Crest Solar White, 
if you don't have a, like a really heavyweight cardstock, you could instead double up, like put a card panel on the front of a note card just to make it stronger. All right, so there we have a card panel with that scallop dotting and a note card of the same size and our windows will line up. Okay, see how they line up? Now, I didn't have to do this. I could have just cut this and then use the dotted pattern right on the background, but by doubling up the front, it makes this stronger on the side. So I just wanted to show that in case you don't have super heavyweight cardstock. On here, I didn't double up and it was just fine, but you could do the dot directly on here. You could background stamp whatever you want, but you can see how that lines up there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some adhesive here and adhere this onto the front of my card. I usually use liquid adhesive. I don't know, I've been going through tape runner kind of thing lately. All right, so now I'm gonna tape this on the front and we have a fun card front started. Now next, I wanted to have a frame because you know, it kind of gets, when I put a white piece in there, it might get a little lost. So I want a little frame around this. So I have a piece of gold cardstock or gold matte cardstock. I'm going to use that same hexagon die that we just used, the smaller of the two, and I'll place it down. And then the bigger, the one that's slightly bigger, I'll put around it. So I'm just nesting them together. I'm going to use tape there just to make sure they don't shift as they go through. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm trying to figure out good times for lives. I, I tell you. I can't do like it every day, every week at the same time because there's always something going on. But I'm trying to figure out what time is good. I'm not sure. And unfortunately, my son has a baseball game right now, but he's not pitching, so it's okay. But every once in a while, I might have to check the score here. So watching Mike's watching it. All right. So notice how I was able to get a nice gold frame. Now remember, there were these foil plates that'll let you do different color foils, but this is just another way to add a little bit of shine. Kathy said it's a good time for happy hour for you, but I don't think I should partake just yet. But here we go. Okay, I'm gonna put that adhesive around the edge. I could have used liquid adhesive and I'm just gonna glue this on front. So now we have this nice frame for that hexagon. And I'm telling you, I'm doing a lot of hexagon and ovals. If you checked my last video, I did how I talked about how a hexagon or a, an oval is nice in the center of any card size. You can make it work. I feel like a hexagon is that way too. Um, I feel like proportions don't matter as much. So, all right. So now we have this the card window card created. Next, we need to create our element that will pop up on the inside. So now I got to find my stamp set. Mike, where did I put my stamp set? Hang on. I'm a looking. I'm a looking. I can't find it. Just a second. I wanted to do the thanks for being there. Do, are there any questions while I look for this, Mike? Because I am. Oh, I know where it's from. Do, do, do. Hang on. I'm a coming. Uh, let's see if we can get the. Hmm. There it is. Nope, that's not it. Damn. I can't find it, so I'm going to use a different sentiment. It's okay. It's okay. What's the question? Sorry. I noticed after a bit of time some washi tape comes up. I have found this doesn't. I, I, did, I haven't used this in a video, but I've used it on my own, and I've used it in a class. And I find it's got a little more stick, plus you are um, really pressing it on when you run it through the die cut machine, so it, it's not coming off at all. I apologize, I can't find this stamp. I thought that's what it was. Where did it go? Hang on, hang on. Oh, gosh. I found it. Thank goodness. Okay, sorry about that. I wanna use this. Thanks for being there when I needed you most. I really like that Pink Fresh has some sentiments that are a little more unique, a little more like thought provoking than the basic sentiments. 
and they have coordinating dies that cut them out. So this is the Thanks for Being There stamp set. I'm gonna use this one on a card today. It's got this beautiful floral. I love the style of this, but right now I'm using the Thanks for Being There when I needed you most. And now I'm gonna set that there and not be able to find it later too. Sorry about that. Oh, it's Friday. It's Friday, people, right? Okay. So I am placing this into my Misty stamping tool. I do have a waffle flower grip mat in there. Just kind of hold it in place. I see somebody is asking if you can um, stitch after piercing with that scallop um, background. Sorry, my head's in the way. That scallop background die. You could, you definitely could stitch. I would use a thin needle because it makes just a piercing, not like actual holes. So um, I would recommend using a thin needle and like really thin thread to do that. Okay, so I'm stamping this with black ink. You could heat emboss this, uh, maybe gold would look nice with the gold foiling, but I really like the look of the bright black and it stands out with all the color. All right, welcome everyone. Enjoy that fruit salad, Betty. Enjoy it. Okay, next up. So now this is going to be what shows here when the card is open and closed. So we need to create the mechanism that does the pop-up. And this is, a you can vary the size. I will show you a few other size variations in the video today or in my next one when I run out of time. Um, but this is a good basic one. Okay. Can they hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. You scared me. He's scaring me. Okay. So what I have here is a piece of white cardstock that is one and a half by five. So it's one and a half by five, and I'm gonna score it in three places. One and a quarter, two and a half, and three and three quarters. So basically your score lines are an inch and a quarter apart. Now you could do um, you know, smaller or bigger. I will show you smaller later, but this is a good basic pop-up size. All right, for a question, Helen said, for crafters who don't make videos, is there a benefit to using a black glass mat over white? I like black because most of what I do in card making is white, or at least it starts white, so there's more contrast. I just find that there's more contrast with the black, so that's why I really, I've, I've got white mats, I've got blue mats, and I always go back to the black. It just, and the white stands out so nice, the lines, so that's, that's kind of what's worked for me, but they have white too. Okay, so now we've got this piece that it, we just created. You can see it kind of folds up into a box. On one flap, I'll put some adhesive. So I put adhesive just on this flap here, just on this side of the score line. And I'm gonna lay that down right up against the inside crease of my card, right towards the center. So it sticks out like this. This is really easy. And once you've done it once, it's so easy to change up to. Okay, so now this all hangs out. Now I'm gonna put adhesive. I'm gonna scribble where my adhesive goes so you can see in the video. Like between the, the you know, the width of this, right up to the window. So just where that adhesive is. So between here and here, and underneath the window. So I'm gonna put some adhesive there. Liquid adhesive is fine. I'm not using liquid adhesive for now because I don't want to um, have to wait for it to dry. Now this here, I'm gonna fold down in half. So see how the two ends meet up there at the crease of the card, and then I close this adhesive onto it and press it down. So now, see how that pops up? You might, can you pull up the comments? See how that pops up so nice? Isn't that cool? Super easy. Now, what you can do is Put adhesive on the top of this little landing we have right here. I'm going to put adhesive on the landing. I'd put the adhesive on the landing while the card is closed so you don't put it up too high and glue your card shut. And now I can lay this right in there and it fits in right in the center. And then I press it down there and then push that through. And now you have this fun pop-up. So this is very, um, very simple to create. You can do this with a circle, you could do this with a heart, you could do this with a rectangle, whatever shape you want. I just really am loving the hexagon. Oval would be great for this too. Okay, so now decorate this however you want, really any way that you want. I am going to create 
using these elements that I just created using the washi tape and dies. Yes, Kathy Z, I'd like to see you make some things with this. You would rock this technique. I think you should do that. Okay, now I'm putting foam tape under this for some dimension. Uh, normally, uh, if I want to save time, I would put, um, I, or if I wanted to spend the time, I would do extra die cuts to glue behind it to make it strong pop up. But just to save time here, I'm just putting foam squares on here. You'll notice I'm not putting many foam squares down. What I'll do is once I get them where I want them, trim off the extra, I'll, extra, I'll go tuck small foam dots, you know, like right along the edges to make sure. Okay, so this one I'm gonna have kind of go right up. I'm, I'm trying to get these to kind of frame my sentiment so that when, um, when the you know, recipient gets it, this, the, fo the focus of the floral arrangement will be the sentiment in the middle. And by the way, this is the magnet that works with my magnetic glass mat and I can just hold it closed because the pop-up wants to pop up. It will flatten nicely when you put it in the mail, um, but for now I wanna kind of flatten it a bit. All right, so let's do two foam dots up here. All right. Let's, anybody got questions in there, Mike? I try to answer questions as I go along because I really don't want to miss any, but sometimes, sometimes I do. You got this one. Uh, I got that one. Not on this particular card, but thoughts on cutting out the middle when using when you use a layer piece just to say I do that. So say you um, want you, you want to layer something together and you've got a big, like you want to have a mat on something, but you're going to put something on top of it and it's going to cover most of it. Just use a smaller shape to cut out of that mat cardstock and that and save that for something else. I do that all the time. I do that a lot. All right, so now this one, I want to kind of go frame up into the center, but also kind of fit in this little nook here. I'm going to place it like this. Oh, I forgot these little guys. I got to remove that. Oh, yes. Yeah, I don't know if they have smaller magnets or not. Um, these foam pieces I used were too big. Um, but I haven't had any trouble with it. I don't use it to hold stencils in place. That's one thing I don't do. Uh, the only reason I don't is because I really like to use like a grip mat for that. But for um, for things like this, just holding something down while I'm working, I find it really handy. All right, so now let's put that down. I'm gonna. I will go back and add more foam tape under these things later on. All right, so there's that. Now I thought I'd add some that are a little flat, you know, like behind that aren't popped up. So I'll just take a little adhesive on this one and kind of tuck it. To come out down here. Are you laughing about some something? Some wise, wise guy has a question. Kathy says, do you remember the year 2003 when you and Kathy Zinsky were both members of the Creating Fame, Creating Keepsakes Hall of Fame? How do I feel about that? That was just yesterday, wasn't it? Wasn't that just yesterday? Come on. We're too old for that. We're too old for that. Or too young. Sorry, too young for that. Yes, Kathy and I both entered a contest in a scrapbook magazine and we won the same year and we didn't know each other yet we knew got to know each other after that I, I just she's I dragged her into the card making world she was a little hesitant at first but I ended up getting her there and I'm glad we did she's one of the best so now this one I'm going to glue on to the pop-up thing so I'm just going to glue it right here so it's like right next to that K and then it peeks out here when the card is closed but then when you open it it's adhered up here not fun. Just to, you can add anything. I need to give this piece a haircut or I need to tuck it up more. Let's tuck it up more. Do it like, yeah, let's do it like that. All right. Give it a little haircut on the end. So you can um, have it so that different pieces pop up or, or stay flat. Okay, so there's that. I will cut off all the extra in a moment. Now this one here, I thought this purple was so pretty. I'm gonna have him kind of peek up here, let's see. So I want it to kind of peek up into that bottom of the frame when it's closed. Then when you open it, it stands up. We were teenagers. Yes, Barb, bless you for saying that. 
we were teen, Mike is laughing. Mike is older than me, he should not be laughing. Now this one I'm gonna put in here, like right in this corner. So there's something coming up there too. Isn't that fun? All right, so now I can flip this over and start my chopping off the edge. I really like these Spellbinder shears for doing this because it just takes all the extra off. All right. All right, there we go. I'm a little shaky and nervous today. I don't know why. I think, I, I don't think I've done a live in a while. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But look at that. Isn't that fun? And I did that all very quickly using that washi tape and dye. Okay, Colin's team is tied at 2-2. Who's pitching, Mike? Um, I don't remember from them. Their team. Not What's, Colin. Not, Colin's not, right? No. Okay. Trey got a triple. Ooh, Trey got a triple. Go Trey. Okay, so you could leave this because there's quite a bit of shine on there. and really didn't take that long, right? Oh, who said that? Somebody said, keep up the lives. Thank you for that, because... Well, sometimes you wonder. Sometimes you wonder what people, you know, what people think. So thank you. So I could leave this with shine, but I wanted to show you that um, Pink Fresh has these. I love these. I've used them many times in videos. They're gems. They're clear gems with colored glitter inside. So if you like sparkle that you don't have to worry about rubbing off, these are really a great option, and they come in lots of different colors. I'm using the blossom color here. Uh, the, I think that I think it's champagne is the other one that I really like. Now, when I put these down, what I like to do is create a usually I create a visual triangle. So I'm gonna and I like to oops, I like to put some close together and some far far apart. So here you can see I put those two close together. Then I'll set one off to the side. So there's a little triangle there, right? Then down here I'll put two let's do a let's do a big one right here let me do one there why not i could change that you can always change them later and then let's put this guy here so i did three here and then i did three here but really my clusters are like a triangle from there to there to there and i just find that kind of works i don't know works well for me and it's just an easy way to scatter some gems. So that now has a little bit of some sparkle on there. Isn't that fun? So that's the first card. So this was the two bros that I did the washi tape and die cutting with, the dotted scallop for the background. And then that sentiment is from the, um, thanks for being there. This is one of my most, you can tell it's loved, one of my most used <laughs> pink fresh stamp sets. I love it. I, I've done it, I've used it a few times in videos. Here's one card. Just go ahead and show you it. This image right here and this right there, I did it on the background there. Just to show you another another card example. Okay. Are those pink or purple gems? These are blo called Blossom. They look pink or purple. Oh, they mauvish. Mauvish. That's, that's the color I would call it. Mike's like, what does that mean? But it's like a pink. A, a pink. Pink. Okay, so there's our first card. Now, this will flatten in the mail, and you can see it, it's fine, and then it pops up, it'll stand up on display, It, all kinds of good things. And when you open it, you have room here to write your personal message. Liz, thank you for the super chat. I'm very sorry you had, had such a hard week. Sending big hugs your way, and I hope that you get to do some crafting this weekend, because doesn't that heal us all? Doesn't it? Yes, Debbie, what I've been doing with my lives, in case you haven't caught a live before, my lives are longer, just like my regular videos, because I try to share a lot. I try to stay on topic, but I try to share a lot of ideas. So what I do is a couple days, usually, if I can, after I will take the photos and put a blog post together, but also will reveal a shortened live, edited live. So I'll take all the important parts of the card and try to put it into a shortened edited live and I send that out too. Um, Mike, you might need to add this in my description. Glue topper. The glue topper. This is the Gina K Connect liquid adhesive with the fine tip bottle. And lately I've been using these things I call glue toppers. I stole them from Lila. They're for crochet needles or knitting needles. I don't know, but it works really well. And it just holds on there nicely. 
All right. So that's the first card. That's the first card. So again, this shape can be whatever you want. Heart, circle, square, oval, rectangle, hexagons are all good options. But notice how if you did this with a basic rectangle, I think it wouldn't be as impactful as the fun hexagons. So I thought I'd use that. Uh, somebody wants to see the card on the left-hand side closely. Can you see it better there? Do you see that fine gold foil outline? It's just so much fun. And then it opens up. All right. It's not a glue, new glue topper. Um, oh, Betsy, it's not, they aren't sold as glue toppers. They're sold like this. Mike's going to add it to the list. Yes. Knitting needle stoppers for beginning knitting and crafts. I don't know. Lila had a bunch of them, so I took a few. And it works really well. So I, now all my glues have, oh, that one wasn't on. They have a hat on it, but it stays when you push it down and then it doesn't clog. Um, there may, I don't know, is that silicone? It feels, yeah, probably. I don't know, silicone or rubber. Um, I don't know, but I haven't had problems with it. Been using them for a while, so hi, Jenny. Okay, so that's the first one. I linked below to all the different um, collections that they have where there are stamps, dyes, stencils, and washi tape that all coordinate. And that washi tape is is amazing. Um, there are There's a butterfly one. I think it might be uh, out of stock right now, but it's just gorgeous. So many great options. So thought I'd start with that one. Next, let's do, let's do, let's see what time is it? Oh boy. Should I go for a more complicated or for an easier one next? Give me a vote here. Let me show you the two, and you guys can vote on which one I show next. So this is the easier one. It's got this offset pop-up heart, which is kind of fun, and a great way to use, you know, just have something a little bit different. So that's one. Or this one that's got a lot going on, but it has like a more ornate shape. I got some fun tricks for that. So which one, which one would you like to see? And by the way, I made this card five by seven, but the technique I share, the pop-up feature on the side here can be done on a smaller card too. So give me a vote there. Yes, Pink Fresh is here. Thank you for being here. And again, if you are um, doing any shopping at Pink Fresh, they're having a site-wide 15% off using the code below. I just It only excludes the new release and their events. Clicking the links in the list will also apply. Yeah, and if also if you click the links in my description, you don't even need the code. It'll automatically show up um, when you go to checkout. All right. Show, oh, gosh. Okay. I'm going with complicated first. Okay, I'm going to go with complicated first. And this one isn't as, doesn't take as long. So hopefully. If not, I promise I'll share it. Okay. Let me get everything out here. Now this this time I'm using that, oops, flying, throwing things around. Okay, now this one uses the Thanks for Being There stamp set that I just showed you that I said is one of my um, one of my favorites because I use that sentiment, but I really love the style of these flowers. It's just um, a little playful, a little clean. I don't know, I just think they're fantastic. So I use that here. Um, and again, I've used it in videos in the past. Here I just used it white on white embossing on peach cardstock. So really, you can use it in so many ways. All right, so first, let us create these flowers. Now this one is one of those sets that has, well, one of those collections, I guess I should say, that has um, different options. There is a stamp set, four by six stamp set, coordinating dies, and layering stencils. So let me get this out here. Got a grip mat here so I can do some stenciling. Now what I did is I started some of this off screen. I just wanted to save some time. So I've already colored three of these. Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate one, but for this particular card, you obviously need three. And I did the same coloring on all three, but you definitely, definitely could change it up if you wanted to do each one a different color. Now this right here, I just want to tell you what I did here. I gold heat embossed on white cardstock the flower from the Thanks for Being There. 
and I used the coordinating die to cut it out. So I just used embossing ink, stamped it on white cardstock, added gold embossing powder, and heat set it. And then I used the coordinating die to cut it out. And remember how I said I, one of the things I like about pink fresh dies is see how they cut out these little nooks and crannies there? I love that. I just feel it gives a more professional look. Oh, Brienne gave a link to another card using this. Brienne, she's a magician with finding links. Thank you, Brienne. I appreciate it. So I like to go ahead and do this. You could heat emboss, then do your stenciling, and then die cut. But I figure that I sometimes think this is easier, and it also allows me to hold my stencils in place. So I'm going to grab the first stencil and line it up. So I'll put it right there. This is very easy to line up. This will color that large flower first. So um, you could, you know, there are many ways to line things up, but I, looking here, I'm just gonna remember that if I line my stencil up kind of off like this, each time they'd line up. Uh, the glue topper, I don't know, what do I have I it called? I already asked, I already answered that. I'll oh, I did, oh, sorry, okay. All nice. right, so now we can do some ink blending. I am using Pink Fresh inks today. I've used them many times in videos and I talk about one of the reasons I really like them is because they are jelly bean happy colors. They're the happiest of happy and they come in collections like, let me show you here. Um, I don't mind close by. Light, medium, dark, and very dark that all work together. Now you can buy them separately um, one of the things that you could do is just get the light and the dark and, you know, work with that. I'm going to use the, the second and the fourth, so the medium and the extra dark for um, this particular flower because I really wanted bold color. Another thing that I, and they have lots of gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Another thing that I really like about Pink Fresh inks is that they, the color kind of um, goes on bold and then it kind of pulls back and dries as it smooth. Uh, pulls back and smooths as it dries. So you get really beautiful um, color, and it's very forgiving. So you will notice that I am not taking a lot of care here to make sure that I'm getting a perfect blend. So I did about a pretty light application of the sparkling rose, which is a medium ink color. Now I'm going to come in with Raspberry Bliss and a smaller brush here and go towards the center. I am not going to do much blending. I just put color down. Now, I put it on pretty heavy too. And what you're gonna see, I'm gonna lift this off, is it may not look very blended, but these inks will blend into each other with time. I love their inks. I use them a lot, highly recommend them. All right, so I'm not gonna clean my stencil each time just to save time, well, I'll clean one. Um, People ask how I clean my stencils. I like this Spellbinder spray bottle, it's new. It does like a stream of spray. I've got rubbing alcohol on there and I do one spray and then use a dry cloth and it cleans it off wonderfully. Okay, I'm not gonna clean them all though because who wants to clean, right? All right. All right, so the next one, I'm gonna line this up. Now I, I'm i going for some fun kind of know, unique colors here. But you could do this in any colors that you wanted. Now for this one, it's gonna be the big flower and these little ones. I'm coming in with Sunkissed, which is a light, and then uh, Fruit Punch, which is darker, and they go together nicely. Yes, Diana, I saw Diana, she's in the, com in the comments there. I saw her two, day two days ago, and I've redone my nails already. Where did I put my ink stand? I'm telling you. Are, oh, these are felt. So these are firm felt ink pads. I really, really like them. I think they're, I think they're great. Okay, so I'm going to put, this is a lighter color. It will lighten as it dries, and I'm just putting down a light application there. Then I will come with a, the darker fruit punch, and watch how fast I do this. Yes, the, these are felt. Did I say foam? They're felt. The, the firm felt. Yes, 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 yes. And I'm just going to put some dark fruit punch right there in the center. I'm gonna put some of that on those center flowers too. And notice, it's not, I did not take time to blend. And look at that. It's gonna, it's gonna give you smooth, like this one's dry and look how smooth it is, okay? Next, not cleaning. Oh, I'm gonna regret that, aren't I, Mike? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
All right, the next stencil, let's do this one next. This one lines up, the center's here. So I'm gonna use a yellow for this. I'm gonna use Sweet Mustard. This is a great, um, great yellow. I use this one quite often too. Hit me up with questions as I go here. So this one, I put um, Sweet Mustard. Then I'm gonna come in with whatever's left over on my brush here. Just put a little darker shade on like part of that circle just to give it a little, a little bit of shading. All right, then the final stencil. So you can see these are very easy to line up, very easy to color, add color. I will forever be appreciative of companies doing this where we do not have to take the time to color something out. Oh, yes, we can do, it says, how about a Jennifer McGuire ink and Kathy Z Craft Along. That is something we can do for sure. We have done um, chatting live. Somebody else included Gina too in it. And Gina, yes. We've done a, a, a chat live where it was the three of us chatting. Um, but I don't think we created, so we do need to do that. So this is Lemoncello, and it's like a yellowish green. It's a nice alternative to a bright green. You definitely could do bright green, but I thought with this color palette it'd be fun to change it up. Then I'm coming in with the Spanish moss and just putting a little bit kind of at the base of the leaves. When I want to put a darker color on my leaves, I kind of follow like the vein that would go up or the stem and that's where I put the color. So that's Spanish moss. I'm trying to do this as fast as possible, but you know. Thanks for being there. And Laura, Laura Basson, girlfriend, you know I'd take you there. Look, we will, um, Definitely it requires singing if you're there in a little uh, Is that the thanks, thanks for being there set? This is the Thanks for being there set. Isn't this flower just the cutest? Laura. Laura is you know, there's a lot of good people in this world, but Laura is one of the best one of the best So there we have Isn't that cute? I just love that and how it, it fits nicely like on a circle die too So you could do a circle pop-up. You could do lots of things so I just wanted to demonstrate how easy that was to do. Off screen, I created four, uh, three of these. And those are the ones I'm gonna to use today. So again, that's the thanks for being there. Um, now these I'm gonna be adding with foam squares. So what I like to do is use the coordinating die and cut an extra one from scrap white cardstock and glue it to the back. So this is stacked. It's just stacked with one extra, but you definitely, um, could do more if you wanted to. I still will use foam tape behind this, but by adding that extra die cut behind it, it makes these like pieces sticking off a bit stronger. And you can see they're gonna kind of be sticking out on my card here, so I want it to have that strength. Yes, my mom is a big fan of Lemoncello. That's the color that Aunt Betsy was just saying that, because Beth Betsy was with, with me a few days ago too. And every year for Christmas, my brother gets my mom a small bottle of Lemoncello, and it lasts her to the next Christmas, so. Only for special occasions. Okay, so we have our three flowers ready. Now it's time to create this crazy card base. Now, I'm gonna use a fun ornate frame there. Just to show you, you don't have to use basic dies all the time. I do think basic dies oftentimes are more forgiving, but I wanted to be able to show you can use fun frame dies. I know Pink Fresh has a lot of fun frame dies, so I thought that would be fun to show here, but you could definitely do a plain circle here and it would simplify this a lot. Okay, Mike, what's the score? Two, two. What? Still two, two. Still two, two. Okay, let's do our base. Hang on here, I gotta get a piece of cardstock. I hear Lila upstairs. I wonder if she's cooking dinner. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna make my card base. If you watched my last pre-recorded video, I talked about different card sizes. And the way that I like to make my five by seven cards is to just take a full sheet of cardstock and squirt right down the center at five and a half inches, then fold it over. So I have just basically a folded piece of cardstock here. Then I take my trimmer and I'm gonna cut this down to five by seven. Right now it's too big. Now I normally cut off in quarter inch increments simply so I can save these strips for another project that you could just chop off a half inch here if you wanted. So I'm cutting it to be five inches wide. 
And then here, I'll cut off an inch and a half, and that will give me five by seven card. And I have these scraps that I can use. Somebody asked how old Lila is. She turns, um, Sue asked, she turns 12 in a couple weeks. Oh, Chicago pizza, that sounds good. But I eat Disney food all week, I need to eat healthy. So Anyway, so now I have these scraps that I'm gonna save in my drawer here, because I use them a lot. I have a five by seven card base. Now, with the technique that I'm doing, I'm using a big die on a big card, and it's not gonna fit through my die cut machine, it'll be too wide. So here's a little trick that I found that I like to do. All right, I am going to cut Mo I'm going to cut four inches off the back here. So I'm just cutting one inch from the score line. So the score line's right here at the one inch mark, and I'm going to cut. So I have this funny looking thing here, and you'll see why in just a moment. I'm going to save this. I'm going to use this too. All right. Now I want to use this die set, and it's a big pop up element. I thought it was a cool die set, so I've used this in a video before also. This is the ornate circle. It does lots of detail with the inside die. Then there's the outside die, so you can use them together or separate. But I'm going to start here by this will get taped right towards the top center here. Get some tape. Oh, all the things people are eating tonight. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, so I'm going to tape this centered. Now, one of the tricks with this is I can use a T ruler to make sure I have it straight here. So just check the points there, and it is straight. So now I'm going to open this up and run this through my die cut machine. The reason I cut this bit off here is I couldn't have fit this through my die cut. Well, I could have fit it through the, this particular machine, but most machines, that seven inch won't fit through. So by cutting this off, we'll put it back in place later. Now this will fit. So I'm just gonna fold this flap up and run this through. This will create the window on the front. All right, for many years, I only knew, Linda asked, for many years, I only knew of Stampin' Up. Since I've discovered you and your crafty friends, my world has expanded. How do you organize your craft room? By company or specific products? Well, welcome. It's a, it's a fun, uh-oh. What's happening? Going glitchy. Are we good? Um, it's a fun little crafting world. So welcome, welcome. Um, I would say um, the it really depends on how you craft. For me, since this is my job, I find that um, it's best to sort by to store things by company. But if I did this for fun and it was just for hobby, I would definitely store by theme so I could find what I need. But my brain is weird and it thinks, it remembers things by company better than theme, if that makes any sense. But really, um, you know, either way would work. I do recommend, I have a craft room tour video and I have stamp storage videos and stuff on my channel and you can find a lot of that information there. Um, and it can help you get organized. I need to do more organization videos, but. See how long it takes Brianne to find it. Yeah, Brianne will be on it in two seconds. Somebody asked about my tea roller. I did not cut it down. Simon says stamp sells the perfect size one for card making. And it's got all the important mark measurements marked on it for card making. It's fantastic. They have a bigger one too, but you really don't need it. Okay, so now this is the front of our card, right? I need to put a back into it so that it's back to a five by seven card. So this panel here is five by seven. There, there it is. There, Brianne, she's awesome. She added that video. Thank you, Brianne. There's some information on um, like organization. So I put adhesive on this flap here, and now I can lay this five by seven card panel, just, just a panel, in there. So now I formed it back to a five by seven. So this is five by seven. Now there's this here. If this bothers you, I, it wouldn't bother me. But if it does bother you, you can put some adhesive on the back. And remember the piece we cut off before I said to keep that? You can put that right back in place and you can barely see that seam between. So now we have a nice, strong five by seven card base with a window. All right. Now we need to decorate our little pop-up thing, our little pop-up frame here. Now, 
I'm going to cut these two together to create a white decorative frame. But here's the thing. I didn't want to have to put glue on the back of that detailed frame here on screen. So to save time, I have white cardstock here that I've put Altenew double-sided adhesive on the back of. So you just take the um, Altenews, any kind of double-sided adhesive, put it onto cardstock before you die cut and it turns it into a sticker, which is a huge savings. Yes, Gina, I'm getting a lot of requests for five by seven cards. And let me tell you, I am really liking that size because um, it's a different palette. And like with these big flowers, it gave me more room. I wanted to use three of them because I liked them so much. So the five by seven option is fantastic. And if you want to learn more about five by seven cards or A6, which is a little bit bigger than an A2, um, I have my most recent video, my most recent non um, live video. I go through lots of that. And I'm gonna be doing more because I really think doing different card sizes is huge. Okay, so now I'll die cut this. And remember, I put adhesive on the back of that white cardstock first. All right. Somebody asked, Samantha asked, when you're stumped and overwhelmed with product, how do you get your mojo going? Oh, Samantha. <laughs> Mike's laughing. Um, it's hard. It's hard. I know that sounds like a, it's not a real problem to have, but it, you know, it, sometimes creating on a deadline is tough, but I will say some of the things that help me, I've done a video on this. Hey, Brian, <laughs> I've done a video on this, how to kind of get your creativity going. One of my favorite ways is to look back at old videos I've done, or in your, in, if you don't do videos, look back at old cards you've made. Look back at old cards you've made and think about like what techniques or designs or products you really had fun creating with. And then remake that card in a different design, color, shape. Like use something you've created in the past to kind of re-inspire um, yourself. Inspire yourself, does that make sense? That way you don't have to think too much and you know it's something that you really enjoy. So I will go back to like an old video I've done and kind of, or look at an old card I've done and think of something to do based on that. So if you don't, obviously most people don't do videos, if you, want to keep track of your cards, you should send your cards right. Um, I, I'm a big fan of sending cards. Just take a picture of it with your camera and keep an album on your phone of cards you've sent out. And you can even put a note on it to say, um, to say, you know, who you sent it to. That's another way to keep track of who you sent what to. But anyways, you would have all of those cards you've created with the different techniques you've done. And that will help you to kind of get your mojo going. Erica, thank you. I love you. I owe you a text too. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much though. Um, we're going to go get dinner after this. So there was stick, sticky on the back of that frame that I just cut and I'm putting it onto the solid frame that um, I cut out of the center of the note card. So that Colin's doesn't go to Colin's on second. How did Colin get on second? I thought he wasn't pitching. He's on second. How did he get on? Oh, he's playing second. No, he he's on, but hit how's the he? ball and got to second. <laughs> was he pinch hitter? No, he's hit twice. I'm so confused. Okay. You hit the ball and then you go. I know, but usually when you're hitting, you're a position player. Okay. He must be pinch hitting. Okay. Anyway. So now this is what's going to pop up. All right. So see that detail on there? All right. So now when you do use this, sorry, I'm a little distracted tonight. It's a Friday night thing. It's a Friday night thing. And anyways, that's good. And Brian's got the video. Brian found the video. Keeping the joy in crafting video. Brian just put it in the comments. That's a great one with, for tips on how to kickstart your mojo. All right, so see that, that detail? I think that's pretty. Okay, now I did the center of this off screen to save some time. Let's find out. What set is this one from? You amaze me. Where is it? Do -be -do 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 -do. It's the artistic Dahlia, it's over here. So remember this set that I showed you at the beginning that we did the washi tape here? In it is this You Amaze Me stamp. I've used it a lot, you can tell there. I also like the Always There For You. There is a die that cuts that out nicely. And remember, Pink Fresh cuts into the nooks. So, I mean, look at how detailed this is. Oh, Jennifer, thank you. And I'm hoping I get to see you at Create again. 
get another hug. See how it cuts even like the centers of the Y and the O? I love that. So anyways, I'm not using the coordinating die today, but I did stamp the You Amaze Me from the Artistic Dahlia set onto a white circle. And it was actually the white circle that came out of this frame. And I matted it onto a gold circle that I cut with a circle uh, die that's slightly bigger. I just looked through my stash for one that's slightly bigger. Now I can glue that into that opening there. Uh, thank you. What is what this is this stencil kit called? Which one for these flowers? You were showing that, I think. Oh. At the time. So the sentiment is from the artistic Dahlia, and remember I showed you creating these at the beginning of the video. The um, I'm going to probably look for that later, but you know the. Stamp, these flowers that we're adding is from the thanks for being there. This is all linked below and remember, remember to use either click the links below or use the JM15 discount code to save 15% because Pink Fresh is awesome. I know and you know what I'm using all older supplies today like products that they've had out for a while so some of you may have some of these things too which is always fun too and almost all of these I have ideas for in my um, in my video gallery that I talk about at the beginning. All right, so there we go. That's going to go in there. Now it's time to do our little pop up for this guy. Now earlier I gave you some dimensions that work for a little pop up. I'm going to give you another another shape that works. This won't pop up if it up as high. Really, either one would work, and you can really flex flex this a bit and make it work for you. But you can write down the measurements to the last pop-up and this one, and it's just two different options. This time, since it's a bigger die cut that's popping up, I made this wider. So it's two inches wide and four inches long. And we're going to score it one, two, and three inches. So it'll still give us that little pop-up cube. It's just going to be wider and not pop up as much. But remember, you can go back and write down all those measurements. So I did the four score lines, that one inch, two inch, and three inch. And I'm going to fold them all in the same direction. So it ends up looking kind of like a cube from the side. Brianne just put a link to the video gallery. Brianne is like the super linker. She needs like a, she needs a official name. We'll have to think of that. Okay, so on one flap here, you can see on to the over from the score line, I put adhesive along that flap. And as before, I'm going to put it up against the crease of the card, kind of centered on the window. So I'm kind of centering it here. It doesn't have to be perfect, really. So I missed it, the crease. So now you can see that flap is glued right up to the crease of the card. See that? I'm trying to get it in the light just right. It's kind of centered there. All right, now I'm going to put adhesive. Remember last time I went, I kind of put adhesive in this area? You don't need to mark it. I'm just showing you in the video. I'm going to put adhesive in about the width of this piece up to the window. So I'll put some adhesive there. You can use liquid adhesive here. You just would need to give it some time to dry. So there's adhesive right there where the black pen is. I'm going to fold this in half so the two ends meet up there and then press the edge down so that glue gets pressed down onto it and there's your little pop-up. Okay? All right. All right. So now we have this little platform here. See that platform there? We're going to add our frame to it. So I'll put adhesive onto that platform. I'm using more adhesive than I need, but you know, that's what happens. And now I'll take this and fit it into the opening. And then push the other side through so that it can open. Make sure it's on there. And now look at that. Isn't that fun? So now it's I used a more ornate frame. You could definitely keep this very simple by just doing circles. You could do circles. In fact, uh, Pink Fresh has circle dies and circle foil plates that coordinate like the hexagons I showed you earlier. Okay, so there we have the pop-up. So now we can add our little bits to it. So I have these three flowers. But I wanted to show you the way that I at, like to do fillers sometime. Like I had these on here and I was like, I felt like they were too separated and I wanted this to be one of those cards that's like kind of over the top. So I wanted some filler in here. One thing that I do a lot 
is I will white heat emboss on vellum. So you could white heat emboss these images on vellum and cut pieces off from it and kind of tuck them kind of sticking out and it kind of fills in and connects some. But what I decided to do today, instead of doing white heat embossing on vellum, I'm doing a light color stamping on white and I'm gonna tuck those coming out and it just adds a little bit of interest. So let me show you how I did that. Um, I am using, this is a great fillers stamp set. So this is all kinds of wonderful. This happens to have one of my other favorite Pink Fresh Sentiments. You can see it's used a lot. I love this. You are all kinds of wonderful. I think that is just such a great sentiment to give to so many people. It would be good for teachers right now, too. Um, and there is, of course, a coordinating die. Look at how nice and tight it cuts it out. So this, um, I'm not using that sentiment today, but just wanted to point out it's one of them. Now, in addition, there is... Um, in the stamp set is ooh, what's the score Mike? Two to two. Oh Colin didn't score did he? Nope. Darn. Okay so here we have the stamp from there and this is one of those where they connect the images so you can stamp them all at once stencil them in all at once and then die cut them all at once and it's great for this particular card design. Now there are layering stencils that allow you to color these in but I'm not using those today. I'm just using these filler stamped uh, images on this card. So what I'm gonna do is take the coordinating die and cut it out. So off screen, I stamped that floral image that has the four florals on it. And I stamped it with warm buff. And this is something I learned from either Leah or Heather. I think it was Heather um, from Pink Fresh. This is a great, it's a light brown, but when you stamp it, it dries and almost looks like a soft gold. It almost looks like a soft gold. So it matches nicely with gold heat embossing. I could, gold, could have gold heat embossed these flowers, but I felt like it would be too much gold with this card. I wanted something a little more subtle, so I used Warm Buff. This is a great color ink. And it, um, there are other shades, but that particular one, and that's something I learned from the Pink Fresh folks. So I stamped the flowers with warm buff and now I did that off screen just to save some time. Now I'm using the die that coordinates to cut them all out. Are there questions Mike? Cut this out. I'll line this up. I've got another one here too. Can you show how to make a frame if you don't have infinity dies or coordinating dies? Um, like a frame, like a pop-up element, or just like the gold frame I did on the last card? <laughs> oh my gosh. It already. I lost it already. If you don't have, you really, to create your own frame, unless you have frame dies, to create your own frame, it's good to have like two that are slightly different in size. So if you wanted to create like a gold ring, um, I highly recommend nesting dies. I think any kind of stacking or nesting die is good set is good to have, especially in basic shapes. Um, you know, or you can buy a set of dies that is meant for just cutting frames. But nesting dies are a really great way to do that in so many ways that you can use them. Um, how do you store your longer sets? Uh, my longer sets, like the uh, stamp sets that coordinate with the washi tape that I showed you earlier. There are longer pockets available. I can't remember who has them. I can't remember who has them. I don't use them. I just put them in my regular extra large pockets and have them sticking out the top. And I just have a place for those in a drawer. I'm, uh oh. What's going on? I don't know. Oh, I'm flashing, I'm flashing for some reason. Okay, do you find it easier to use a stencil when image is already die cut or stencil and die cut? I, you know what? I like to do um, the stenciling first, or I'm sorry, do the die cutting first because if I mess up the die cutting, I don't waste all that time stenciling. That's what I figure. Okay, so I did two uh, sets of those flowers. These are from the All Kinds of Wonderful stamp set. I keep throwing these dies around. And um, I stamped them in that warm buff. So it's just giving us a really soft image. 
All right, so now we can start putting this together and these will be filler. So the reason I like to do fillers too is um, I do gardening, I do um, planters, and pots and such, and I love the expression that my mom taught me long ago. And I think it's a common one in the, the gardening world. And when you create a, um, a planter, you want to have fillers, which are just like, you know, um, kind of clustery looking flowers that kind of grow, grow in clusters. So you want fillers, you want spillers, and those are the ones like ivies or uh, sweet potato vine that kind of spill down the side of the planter. And then thrillers, and those are the ones that stick up high in the center. So like, um, um, you know, kind of some kind of spike flower, uh, spike or coleus that grows tall. And so, the, so it's thrillers, fillers, and spillers. And so I feel like these are the thrillers we need kind of those, uh, these are the thrillers we need, like the fillers and spillers around it. All right, Mike, can you, I can't see the comments, I'm sorry. All right, so now I'm just placing these three on here. Now remember I did, oh, MFT has longer storage, there you go. Um, yeah, there you go, okay. Yes, I don't know what's happening. Our screen kind of did some funky things there for a moment and I'm not sure why, I apologize for that. All right, so I'm just putting some foam tapes on here. I will go back later and squeeze smaller foam piece foam tapes here and there to kind of fill in. Um, like I'll tuck one, you know, like right under here and right under here. I'm just trying to get the placement right right now. And as you add things around your pop-up, make sure that it'll open up. Oh, pillars, pillars or thriller. I'm sorry, pillars. So pillars, fillers, and spillers. You can also say thriller. Um, so these would be the pillars. There you go. Fillers, pill spillers, you know, but you could call it either. All right. So now I want one up here and I'm going to make sure it'll open if I do that. Yep, it will. All right. Yeah. I, I, it's almost time to plant around here. We wait until mother's day. That's the rule of thumb around here and it's killing me. It's killing me because I know that my favorite gardening place has stuff already. All right. So this one I'm going to put right about there. So I kind of got a triangle going on here. I could make it more triangle if I wanted, but I think I'm going to stick with this. So now there's a lot hanging off. So what I'll do is just flip it over and cut off the extra. And I'm going to keep that extra in case I want to fill in with these. So you could take these little bits, um, kind of go around. Yeah, I, I think the reason I say thrillers is those are the ones that I often, well, besides I, I like spikes, but I'll, I'll try something new that's really tall right in the center and that will really just grab attention. All right, so, oh, my little, I, now my foam tape is peeking here. And a good way to get rid of that is to take your anti-static power tool, just put it right on there and remove, it covers up that stick. So now it won't stick when it closes. So there we go. So now you could absolutely leave, leave this as is, but I thought I would show you about those fillers. So we have all these little fillers here. I love these, so much fun. And I, I like to also give them a haircut because this is too long, I don't need it this long. So I'm gonna just tear it, nobody's gonna see. Put some liquid adhesive kind of at the base of it. This is something I've been inspired by JC Gasper. I did, I did a live with him recently where I kind of only, like I leave the tips unglued so they kind of pop up a little bit and look like they're kind of floating there. That makes any sense. Tuck this under here first. By the way, the way I go about sticking little um, little foam pieces behind these is I'll pick up a little bit of a foam square with my craft knife and then kind of lift and tuck under and then press down and pull out. And that will help me place all those. Okay, so now I've got all these little fillers that I'm gonna stick in here. So these, um, these fill, uh, fillers could be what I did here stamped with a very light ink so it's not too distracting. Again, I could have done these in gold heat embossing but I think it'd be too much. This has already got a lot on it, right? Uh, another thing you could do is white heat emboss images on vellum and have those sticking out. That's really cool too. Ah, there we go. Uh, Brian just linked to the live with JC where we talk about flowers a lot. He's good with flowers, man. He's very inspiring. 
Okay, so I've got liquid adhesive behind these. I'm gonna put my magnet on there to hold it down. Now over here, we'll just keep going and see how these, I'm popping out those little insides. So it, see how it cuts it out so nicely. Now this one, I'm going to tear off the bottom there. Do, 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 do. And this one's gonna kind of go back here. I have a lot of him hanging off, so it's just a little bit there. I really like this one. The shape of this one's fun. Now these you could have colored too. Remember there were layering stencils for these, but I skipped those. All right. So these, you know, this is one of those things. Listen, we're all very different when it comes to crafting. Some people love the, you know, these kind of fillers. Some people, I don't want to take the time to do them, and it's per, it's a personal preference. And I don't think any one is right or wrong in their way of doing it. Just you know, go with what you you feel comfortable doing, and you can also once in a while try things that you normally wouldn't do. You know, try stepping up a card if you normally don't, or try doing a simple card if you normally go over the top. Like this one, I is a little over the top, a lot over the top, but the next one is um is a little simpler uh no i don't cut myself with my craft knife i don't know why i've just been doing this too long another if you're scared of a craft knife you could use a craft pick to like stab the side of the foam square and pick it up that way so really either way would work might as well put this one in here let's see um let's tuck him right there so i'll go back and do that later all right so now i like where all those are so i can cut these off now, you could add to the inside here another flower, or you could add some fillers. I don't think I'm gonna add, I could, I could have it like kind of coming out here. Should I do that? So there's something when you open it? What do you all think? Should I, I don't know. Or I could have it like that. How about that? I'm gonna do that. Who knows? Um, this yellow thing is a magnet, and I'm using a glass magnetic work surface. And that information is linked below. All right. Let me see. I think I'm going to tuck this like right in here so it's kind of like peeking out when you open it. Yeah. So now there's plenty of place to write a message. Look at how it pulls it all together. And I will go back on this one and add some little gold glitter gemstones but to save time I'm going to skip that right now because I gotta I got one more I got one more here we go so isn't that fun so you can see how these fillers that we just put in are very subtle because I used a light ink on white cardstock there we go yeah I added it there we go isn't that fun so here is where I added some gold glitter gel or glitter uh, gems you can see I put more on here than normal because it's a bigger card. But you can see there's a little triangle there, a little triangle there, and then all these are like in a triangle. So this one I don't have the flower on the inside, but this one I did. So there you go. So that's a five by seven card. If you don't have a fancy frame die like that, you could definitely just use circle dies. All right. So that is the most complicated one. Now I know this has gone on long, but I'm going to do the next one because I have to. Will anybody stick around, you think? Mike's like, I want to eat dinner. Okay, I just wanted to show you again. Here's a different use of that same flower. This I just did, white heat embossing on peach cardstock. Isn't that fun? This is a see-through card. Okay, so there you go. That's a, we've got some thrillers, you can call them pillars, and then we have some fillers to it. All right, um, the Tim Holtz glass mat, uh, somebody asked. I love the Tim Holtz glass mat. I used it for many, many years, and I use it in other parts of my craft room. I don't use it right here because it, it's not big enough for the view of my camera. So that's that's the reason um, I don't use that here, but it's fantastic. Uh, you know, I don't use the magnets as, as much as some people do. You see me use it a few times today, but that's that's pretty much the extent of what I use it for. So it's really up to you. But there is a discount code, a pretty decent one for that below. And remember, if you're looking at anything from Pink Fresh today, there's a 15% off code down, um, down in the comments. I almost, or in the description, I almost said downstairs. There's a code downstairs. All right, so let's do this one qu as quick as can be. 
does, who's got anything else going on um, on a Friday night? Does anybody? Because I don't. All right. So let's start out by doing this little stenciled element. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save that. Well, no. Yeah, I'm going to save that because if I go too long, that's an element I can skip. I'd rather show the card base. All right. So let me get my pieces in order here. So let's, so you can see here that the front is a little bit shorter than the other. There's a little border here and that heart kind of pops up off the edge. Isn't that fun? So this could be done with a circle, square, whatever you want, but a heart is fantastic. This heart is one of my most used die sets of all time. You've seen it in many videos. There's Shaker Heart dies from Pink Fresh. There's the two in here and it does a faux stitch line on the inside and the outside, which gives you that faux stitching on the heart and then around the heart too. So I really like the shape of this heart and the sizes, I use them a lot. Okay, so I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch side folding note card. So my first card opened upwards, it was top folding. This is a side folding version. And you don't have to cut the front edge off, you could leave it on if you wanted to. All right, so here I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut three quarters of an inch off of the front. So I'm gonna put this in my trimmer here three quarters of an inch off. There are a few different ways you can do this, but this was the easiest. So now I have a note card where I cut three quarters of an inch off here. You could do more or less. That's just what I chose today. All right, so now I need this heart, larger heart. Again, do whatever size, uh, shape you want. Let's see, how close to the edge did I do this? Let's see. I prepped this ahead of time so I could share more. So uh, it just helps me a lot. Okay, so I want the heart to be right about there. Open this up. And you can see the heart's hanging off the front because we um, trimmed that down. All right, so I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine. Uh, this card is four and a quarter across by five and a half inches tall, but you just saw me cut a three quarters of an inch off the front. So you can see that here in a moment. So. There, the front's a little shorter, but this is four and a half by five and a half total. All right, now we need to do the pop-up feature. I've already created that. Now this, um, I made narrow because I wanted to, so you couldn't really see it. See how you can't really see that pop-up there? So I made it narrow because the edge of the heart, I wanted to make sure it didn't show. So the width of this doesn't really matter, but this time I did three quarters of an inch by five inches long. I did five inches long on the first card too. And in this case, you can again, write all these down and I've done a video with other ideas of this in the past. I'm going to score at one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarter. So those are all evenly spaced. So that when I fold it up, you can see how it forms kind of a cube. Yeah, Roberta, my, um, my empress is very low and it's right here, so I'm sorry that it's loud. Um, my microphone is on me, so it gets very loud, picks up everything. Okay, so now let's add this into our card. So on one of the end flaps, like always, cover one of the end flaps with adhesive. I'm gonna place it so the edge of that flap is right up against the crease on the card. And then I want it to be right about centered up with the edge here where the heart sticks out the most there. So I'll place that down. So you can see it's sticking out there. Now I want adhesive right here between the width of that piece and up to the window. Okay. How do I store my grip mat? Somebody asked. I, I my Alta new one, I have, um, I just have it, they, I have an extra chair in my craft room over on this side that usually is unused and I lay it on there. My waffle flower ones, I store, I have one stored in a drawer and I have one that stays in my Misty. Okay, so there, look at that. So there's the pop-up. And then I will, I'm not gonna do it now, but I will end up putting this blue heart onto it. Okay, but we're gonna first add something to that. Okay, so now let's do our, I'm gonna do the sentiment next. I wanna show you the sentiment just because if I don't take the time to stencil these flowers, I don't have to do that. Somebody said pink fresh links aren't working. Like, are they working? Let me know. Anybody have trouble with the, 
uh, yeah, my pink fresh, Rosie, I'm, I'm with you. My pink, or my um, grip mats get used a lot, so it's usually out. Okay, yeah, I try to do, it, eternally years, I do try to do multiple examples with techniques just so you can really see how versatile something can be. And I feel like the more I, it's like a class, right? And a teacher will show things multiple times. I, I wanna show things multiple times to really demonstrate it. Okay, so this is one of my, you can tell, this is probably my most used Pink Fresh stamp set of all time. Um, this is a, it's the sentiments that get me. It has all of these sentiments on one stamp, okay? So I off screen white heat emboss those sentiments here. I messed up this one with a fingerprint, but I just white heat embossed them. And the cool thing is, is there's a die that cuts them all out at once. So this is a huge time saver. And the nice thing is, is one, you'll have, oh dear, it's going away again. Sorry if the screen goes black. I'm not sure what's going on with the internet. Um, if, um, but, but the nice thing about this, sorry, that scared me. Um, the nice thing about this is you'll have extras left over. So now see, I can have all of these sentiments here. I'm going to use hope all as well, but there's the other ones too. Um, the just a hello is a great sentiment and I love the hope all as well. Yes, somebody says they have this. Yes, I've used, I think this was on my favorites list or it was going to be and I haven't posted that yet. Um, I just find it's a really good, useful one. A lot of times I'll keep the extra sentiments in the pocket so I know where to find it, but I also have a little um, album where I keep my extra sentiments, so some are there. So I'm gonna use the Hope All as well. And the sentiment is going to stick off the edge here. See how it suspends? So you see it when it's closed, but then you see the full heart when it opens. So since it's being suspended, since this is a spiller, it's spilling over this, I'm gonna double it up. I don't want that to be weak. And this blue cardstock, I don't trust it. I want it to be thicker, so I die cut a white to put behind it. Now this is stronger. Yeah, I don't know why it's blipping tonight. I'm sorry about that. We're gonna have to figure that out. We've never had that happen. Tech stuff. It's not the new camera. Oh dear. Okay, so there we go. This is here and we have our sentiment, which I'll add. Next, let's do our little border. I thought it'd be fun to have a little decorative border that peeks out here. So see this decorative border? It has faux stitching. And I thought the faux stitching would be fun to match with the faux stitching on the heart. And this is a much older Pink Fresh background die. Love this. It does all of these faux stitching and it cuts the outside edge. So I'm going to go ahead and I just have this scrap here. I'm gonna just cut a portion of this. It really doesn't matter what portion you use. I'm gonna go with right here. I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine. You could do a full panel, of course. And this will put faux stitching pattern on it. All right. There are no storms here. I don't, we are, we actually, it can't be Wi-Fi because we hardwire in so we don't have problems. So I'm not sure what it is, but we will have, oh, there it goes again. Happen in the future. I think it's my camp. I got a camera. It's my new camera. Oh gosh. Why is it doing that? Okay. We got a new overhead camera and I think that might be it. So we're going to have to do some investigation. So now look at this. Isn't that pretty? Such a fun background. I'm going to just trim off three quarters of an inch of this. It really doesn't matter which part. I'm just going to pick a part a portion here. I'm going to do three quarters. Of an inch. Actually, I might go a little bit bigger. All right. So now I have a little strip. I can save the rest for later. Um, Mike is nervous here because he's scared about it. Maybe it's just the cables. I don't know. We're going to have to do some investigating, but this is the first time. I've used it to film many videos now. It it's my first time live with it. All right, so I'm putting just this little faux stitching here on the end. Now you could use something heavy or you could use the magnets, but I find something heavy puts pressure along all of it. Then I'm going to take a thin strip of light blue cardstock. This was just a scrap left over from that heart. And I'm going to glue that right along the edge, just so there's a little bit of that peeking out too. So these little strips, I use them all the time. I think they're great for these little borders. Let's put it in more. So it peaks when it's closed too. I just think it's fun to have these little strips of cardstock so they peak out. Just adds a little definition. Stamp. 
background stamp. Maybe it was the background stamp. So see how it's oh, a little yes. blue pe peeking out there? The background dye. The background dye is called stitches. I'll show it again. And that's what I created for the border from, and it's linked below too. Maybe it's when I use my die cut machine. I don't know. All right, so there we go. That's our little border there. Now, the last element is the flower. I'm going to do it very quickly. So I'm not going to do anything fancy here. I am using the Pink Fresh Lovely Blooms. This has beautiful full flowers that you can really do a lot of fun ink blending with. Um, and it has some nice sentiments and there are dyes. I really like this. You spread joy wherever you are. And there's a die to cut it out. And it cuts it out nice and close. You can see it there. But I am using the flowers. So off screen, I white heat embossed the flowers. It's one big stamp. White heat embossed on some light pool cardstock. And now I'll use the coordinating stencils to color it in. Let's start with the first one here. I'm gonna do this as fast as possible. Maybe answer some questions at the same time. Mike, what questions do we have? Do we have any? Um, do you make your own envelopes for five by seven cards? I know you purchase some, so, but where? I purchase, I buy five by seven envelopes and um, it's linked in my last video, my last blog post. Um, they're from Cards and Pockets. I link to the ones that I like, um, and that is in my last video. I don't have that right here, um, but five. I think it's really good to have five by seven envelopes because even if you don't make a five by seven card, it's nice to have um, room that if you make a smaller card and you kind of want a spiller, something to hang off the side of the card or stick off the top, you have room to still put it in an envelope. So I'm doing Slumber, which is a nice blue. So I'm doing blue ink. I'm doing colored ink on light blue cardstock. So that's the first stencil. Uh, I need to not mix it up with my last ones. Oops, my last stencils that I haven't cleaned. Then there is, I'm doing these out of order, but it, doesn't, it does not matter. As long as you can line it up, it doesn't matter one bit. Okay, so now I'm going to do the next one. I find Pink Fresh layering stencils or... Um, Layering stencils and coordinating stencils to be very easy to figure out. Now for this one, what color did I do? Do 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 do. I'm gonna do a kind of a oh my favorite color. My favorite waterfall. I've never used this color. It is divine. So I'm gonna do this over the openings here. I think I'm gonna do heavier here. So you can go heavy or light. I'm gonna go kind of heavier with some of this. Heavy on that one. All right. Uh, you like five by seven cards for weddings and anniversaries. Yeah, I think I just I'm telling you, it's something about about um, some a different size that is another great way to kind of kickstart your your um, creativity if you're feeling like your mojo's gone. I'm gonna put a little water flower on the bottom of that one, and then I'm gonna come in with some bold color. So in the waterfall family, we have paradise. I'm gonna do some paradise. I'm gonna do this kind of at the base there. I'll put it over these areas. There we go. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of layering stencils and stencils that coordinate with images like this because it saves so much time. And I don't know, I'm not a natural at figuring out like what to shade and what to not shade and where the highlight should be. And so like here, it, it's doing it for me. It tells me where all of those elements, you know, all of those areas should go. I think I'm gonna do, let's go back here. And you can mix between color families. You don't have to stick with a particular color family every time. This is Atlantis, which is oh, such a beautiful color. And you notice I'm putting Atlantis, which is like a dark teal, on top of that slumber, which was more of a true blue, and it's just beautiful. There we go. And now, leaves. I normally do like to, I haven't done it with this set, but I normally do like to write in the top corner the number of the stencil. It's engraved on here, but I like to write it on there with a black Sharpie so I can see it later on. And then I can always um, cover it with a piece of tape so I don't wipe it off with the rubbing alcohol later on. All right, 
right, so let's do key lime over the stems here. Yes, these are numbered. It says it right in the top. This is this is actually stencil number one. I don't always go in the the order. It, sometimes it's helpful to go in the order. You don't really have to. Whatever makes sense to you is. I mean, it really doesn't have to be one particular way or another. So I went on light handed with key lime, which I use a lot, and I'm going a little bit darker, kind of towards the stems. Not much, just a little bit. You could come in with a darker color if you want. All right, and then last stencil, and then we're in the home stretch. Almost done. I apologize for taking so much of your Friday night up, but here's the thing. If you ever see a long video from me, you can watch it in increments. Some people do like 10 minute videos a few times a week. I just do a two hour video a couple times a week instead. You can break it up into little pieces. But I think I feel like um, the more examples the better. This time I'm using Evergreen, and this is just for those dark details. And this is, you can, this will show you. I'm gonna get, this will give great results even though I put in very little effort, and that's the joy of good inks and good stencils. All right, so again, this was white heat embossed onto light pool cardstock, and I inked with blues and greens over it. Look at that, isn't that fun? And I did that pretty quickly thanks to Good product design. Okay, so now I have the coordinating stencil. I'll cut all of these out at once. For this particular card, I'm only using one of the flower clusters, but I have them all left over for another one. What's the score? Brenda, good question. What's the score, Mike? Uh, I think we're losing three to two. Oh, we're losing three to two. Damn. They switch pitchers. Oh, we switch pitchers? Uh-oh. It was Zach. Who's pitching now? Uh, H. Norton. Okay. Okay. Ah, stressful. I'm telling you, being a mother is, you know, we worry, right? We do a lot of worrying. Being the mother of a pitcher is like nothing else. <laughs> it is it, the anxiety. Okay. So this is the one I'm going to use. And did you see how it cut those three out really nicely? And it cuts out those little in-betweens too which I really like. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I don't like when there's that solid inside. Okay, so now this is gonna get glued onto here. Doo -dee -doo -doo. This is called speed crafting. Can you scroll it? You know, Doug, some people um, do not like longer videos. You know, I had somebody a couple years ago who took the time to email me to say, just so you know, if your video is over 30 minutes, I'm gonna give you an automatic thumbs down. I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm like, maybe you don't wanna subscribe to my channel because I like longer videos simply because I can teach more. That's just gonna always be the, it's just the way I'm at. I am. I struggle with the shorter videos. Okay, so now onto that top platform here. On this top platform here. I'll put adhesive, and then put this into that opening, press down onto that. Now this little stem I need to tuck in, so I'll tuck that down, and now look at that. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I agree, E. e. Miller. I don't like when the dies don't cut those insides, for real. Somebody said, seriously. Do, what, what, seriously what, is it a bad thing? I hope not. Oh, what somebody said, yeah, you know, I, I get it. I get that people's time is short. You can listen at, or is, you know, precious. But I try to really focus on keeping, uh oh, keeping on track, not losing things, but staying on topic. Like, I really want to make good use of your time and show as much as I can. Now, I can't find my Hope All is Well. I already made it. Oh, here it is. So now I got Hope All is Well. I'm going to put adhesive just kind of behind Hope only. I'm gonna lay it so that it kind of comes, sticks out right here. That's good right there. Put some of the heavy on that while it dries. There we go. And then finally on that card, the last thing I did is I added some aqua glitter drops. You know, I know I get it. I get some people can't watch long videos, but the good thing is I put out longer videos less frequently and so you can like watch a little bit at a time. But do know that for long lives like this one, I will do an edited short replay. 
All right, so now here we have our pop-up. Isn't that fun? This one's not dry, so I'm gonna set that down, but here's the completed. So the sentiment kind of stays on the front. I did add, you can kind of see a visual triangle there of the gemstones. And then that flower kind of hangs off on the inside. I can go and add these in here if I wanted to. These little ones, you could even have it kind of peek out from the back of the heart. I think I'm gonna leave it as is. And there you have another pop-up card. And this one is four and a quarter by five and a half, but you could do it bigger. You don't have to cut that front edge off, but I thought that was a fun, fun change of the technique. All right, that's it. That's it. Yeah, some people like to listen to me on the treadmill because it, <laughs> it, makes, it, it makes the treadmill go faster, I guess. <laughs> so anyways, there we have it. I don't know where I put the first card. I put it somewhere. Oh, I see it. I can find it. And there's this one. So we have these three cards. Let's do these three here. There we go. All right. All right, so does anybody have any other questions before we head off? Because it's almost seven, almost been two hours. We gotta go get dinner. But I just wanted to share with you more ways of doing this kind of pop-up because it's something you can do with different basic die shapes that you may have. And I also wanted to show you the Pink Fresh washi tape because man, that's so brilliant. Remember you can use it on the matching envelope. So all of these things use older Pink Fresh Studio products. Uh, they, they have given, sorry, they have given a site-wide discount code to everybody uh, it, that watches my videos. It is JM15, and you can just click the links below, and that should automatically apply the code or just add that code at checkout, uh, and it's for several da days. So all that information is in the description below along with uh, links to all the products, but I do have one link at the top that gives you a visual supply list. I really recommend checking that out. It makes it easier to find something if you're looking for it. So think about any, maybe you've seen other videos with Pink Fresh products. They're all on sale so you can, uh, can check them out. Just a way to save some money, but this you could see could definitely be done with different products that you may have. Okay, so Mike, are there a few couple questions yeah. um, to answer and then we gotta head out. Yeah. All right, um, hi, I'm new to heat embossing here. Do I have to melt the powder until it's flat or should I leave it a little bumpy? Um, it, so it just depends on the image and the powder that you have. It, if you heat set it and it has a little bump to it, that's fine. But if you want it smooth, there are a few things you can do. You can, um, you always wanna let your heat gun get hot for like 30 seconds before you bring it to the image. And you keep that heat gun moving. You can also heat from the back side of the cardstock and sometimes that gives smoother results. Um, but you will know when you heat it too long because it starts to go flat, like the shine goes away. So you could actually test that on a piece of scrap paper, overheating your heat embossing or your embossing powder so you know what it looks like when you go too far, you'll be able to tell. All right, Krista said, no need to dry between stencils for sharper images. Oh, yes. So some sometimes when you use dye inks and you do ink blending, uh, or you do stamping, say you do stamping. Um, before I do like layered stamping where I stamp one image on top of the other, I do like to heat set it so that the stamping stays crisp um, because those inks kind of absorb into the paper. However, with stencils, I don't do that because I'm not putting that much ink down. You know what I mean? Like when you stamp, you're putting a huge blob of ink down, whereas when I'm blending over a stencil, so I don't heat set between, but you can, you can. Uh, thank you, Terrence, uh, for the super chat. Oh, good. I'm glad. I hope I, I hear a lot of people having a rough weeks. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, I hope things turn around for you. And now you can do some crafting this weekend. Try this. I'd love to, to, um, have you all try this. Um, Mike, we have giveaways. Can you pick three names three. while I answer some questions or you got one? What do you have? Did you pick somebody? Oh, Pick three of those things to give. Give it all to somebody. Okay, we're gonna do we're gonna do one winner who gets a bunch. Can you hand me the stack? Yeah, we're hungry. Okay, so Doug said, Will I ever do another craft room tour? I might. It takes a long time to do that. It's a very difficult video to do. And a lot of what's in this new craft room was in my old craft room. So you can go watch that to see a lot of how I store. I still store everything the same way. Oh, it was tax week. That might be it. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick giveaway before we go. 
These are all from Pink Fresh. This is Beyond Happy, which has lots of sentiments and coordinating dyes. I got extras of these, so that's why I'm giving them because I like these. I'm not gonna give mine away. <laughs> mine away. This is the rounded braided rectangles. And these are cool because look at how the shape of the dies. Aren't those fun? So you can do a shaped card and then you can also add the detail between the dies. So that's fun. So that's the rounded. And all these are on sale, remember. Then this is the Folk Snowflake. This was super popular this year. There's coordinating dies and coordinating stencils in there. And the Nothing But The Best, which has coordinating dies. I've used this set, but it still works great. So you got the stencils, the die, and the stamp set. So all of this is going to go to a lucky winner who left a comment here. Mike, who is the lucky winner? Vicki Breeson. Vicki Breeson. How do you spell that last name? B-R-E-S-O-N. B-R-E-S-O-N. So Vicki, please go to my website, jennifermcguireinc.com. Click the contact me and email me your address so we can get these sent to you. And I'll probably include a pink fresh card that I've made too. All right. I think that's it. I've talked enough. I hope this was a good start to your weekend. Um, and using some older supplies and, you know, using new, using them in new ways and creating pop-ups because Hallmark doesn't, sorry, stores don't make cards like that. We do. So it's nice to have something a little bit different. Uh, somebody asked, are my giveaways, uh, are, um, are people who are international eligible for giveaways? Yep. Definitely. Always, always, always. Don't want to exclude any of them. So um, I think that's it. Anything you want to learn about what I've used today is in the description along with that discount code if you're doing shopping. Um, keep in mind, Pink Fresh has a lot of great products in other categories too. So you can just pop around and see. And even if you're not shopping, do some window shopping because they have unbelievable card samples on their website. So many inspiring card ideas that you could use with products you have to. All right, I think it's time to eat. Yep. <laughs> Mike's hungry. Thank you so much for taking this time to watch this. I really do appreciate it. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>